Uh, hi everyone and welcome to my third presentation about uh, this uh, series of uh, hands-on tutorials how we can use machine learning and implement it in the assessment of uh, power system power system assets and in, in this uh, tutorial or in this session what i will be doing actually i will be uh, doing or demonstrating to you some exercise I will have a data set that has been described in the previous uh, lecture uh, and I will uh, use it to uh, implement it in our solving a regression problem. So basically what I will be doing, uh, I will be using neural network and uh, this is my input feature vector. We have the water content, the breakdown voltage, the color, the acidity, and the dissipation factor so all of these will be used to predict the interfacial tension so the objective here is to predict this and we will be using neural network and we will have multiple uh, hidden layers we will we will come to that as we uh, as we uh, proceed and what we'll be using here as i mentioned before we will not be using any uh, coding but we will use an open source called Wika. Uh, this is a software that's been de developed in a university in New Zealand. If you are interested, you, you can Google it and they, they have multiple of uh, tutorials how to use the software. Uh, however, we will limit the usage in this uh, set of uh, tutorials on our problem, which is how to use this uh, software to assess power system assets. Uh, I'm not talking about general applications of machine learning, but specifically for the power, uh, power engineers. Uh, so basically this software can do classification, clustering, association, attribution, or attribute selection. These are different uh, techniques used uh, in uh, machine learning. We will focus at the beginning on the classification. And then as we pr proceed, we will cover some other uh, features uh, as well. That is just a sort of introduction. Uh, let's uh, go from here. And before we uh, start the software, let's see the data. Okay, so this is the data that we will be using. Okay, so this data has to be arranged in this way. So at the top here, you will have the water, acidity, BDV, dissipation factor, and color and you will have the numbers as we uh, as you move on okay down okay this is these are the number of the water acidity edv dissipation factor color and then the last column is your output vector this is what you want to predict the i of t okay so the, as i said we have 730 uh, 30 transformer so the n n what will it do as we will see, split the data, this huge data, relatively huge, it's not a huge actually, it is a medium data. It will split it into two halves, one half for the training. It will train the algorithm about the value of the IFT. And then it will use the data that's not used in the training process to test how good or how bad is my, my algorithm, okay? So that this is the data. Let me now uh, start. Uh, the the software itself, which is called Wika. I have 3.82. I think there is now a newer version of it. So we'll start. Uh, this is the symbol that they have in the, in the software. Uh, there are some stories about this. You can, if you go to the uh, original website uh, of the university and you will see some, if you are interested to know more about the software. But uh, I will limit uh, the knowledge that we, we use is for our own applications. Okay, now this is the first screen that you will have. This is a GUI. Everything is a graphical user interface. So there are different buttons, button, Explorer, Experimenter, etc. Um, at the beginning, we will be only using this, the Explorer button. So we click here. Okay, now we'll have this. Now, if you look at top, there is a pre-process classify, cluster, associate, 
select attribute, visualize, and, and so on and so forth, okay? Now, the first thing you do is you need to open the file. So this file that I show it to you, I will go and I will go and open it. So go open file, okay? And I have to select the uh, proper uh, folder. Okay, now there are different extensions. The one I have is CSV. These are the selected ones. So this is the one I am familiar with, the CSV. So you will see here two files, one file for classification. This is, we'll cover it in the coming tutorial and one for regression, I will open it. Now we have the file open. Now let's explore what do we have here. Basically, we have the six columns water, acidity, BDV, dissipation factor, color, and IFT. And you notice it's with the same, exact, the same order I have them. If you look here to the right, this, this, this place, what you see here, you see some sort of uh, statistical uh, data. So what is the minimum? I'm selecting now the water. What is the minimum? What is the maximum? What is the mean? What is the standard deviation? Okay, and here even some uh, distribution you can see. If you go to the acidity, same thing. BDV, select BDV, uh, distribution factor, color, and then IFT. This is what we want to predict. The minimum value is 13, the maximum 43, and this is the average, the average value. Okay, so this is my, my data. Now there are many things we can do now. In this tutorial, I will limit it to the basic functions only, okay? So we'll go directly to the point. So we want to do what? We want to do classification. We want to classify. So we, we select this tab, classify, okay? And then we have four different options for the training. Use training data, it means that the data, the 730 elements will be used for training and testing. This is not good. We, I, well, this is not recommended. This is only if you want to see that you have a good training model, but that's not good for generalization. Uh, supply test data, meaning what? I will use the 730 for the training, but I will have the data for testing in a separate file. Okay, and I will do that in the future. And the last one, the third one, which I will be using here is the cross-validation. I explained that in the first uh, tutorial. Basically, I will use false 10. We can select any number, meaning that I will split the data, the 730 into 73 fold. So times 10, this is 730. I will keep some of it on the side, uh, which is one tenth of that, using the other nine for the training and use one this one for the testing. Then I will split and so on and so forth I, until I finish the 10 times and then we take the, the average. And the last one is, is the percentage split. What does it mean? Okay, I will split the data, this data with certain percentage. Let's say 70% for training, 30% for, for uh, testing, and that's it. We'll do it one, one time. So this is what we're gonna, uh, we're gonna use. Okay, now here the classifier, this is, we'll choose. Now we need to choose our classifier. Okay, so I will uh, go here and select. Now, before that, you can see here, this is the default. This is what we want to predict. It, it shows here your uh, variables, water, acidity, and all of them are numericals. And IFT is the, is the one that I want to predict. If I want to predict something else, then I have to select it here. Okay, uh, but the default, that will take the last column, and it will be used as your output, output vector. Now I need to select the classifier. I will come and select choose. Okay, the, we, we have here tons of classifiers, okay? Now the classifier we wanna use is uh, under functions, and it is a multi-layer uh, which is the neural network. So this is the classifier we want. There are many, many other classifiers. Now you see some of the classifiers are not active. Some of them are active, some of them we can select. Why? Because this is a regression problem. Not every classifier can be used to solve a regression problem, okay? So we will use the multi-layer Bersbiton. So it's there. Now, if I click on it, 
I can edit batch size, hidden layer. I will have it as one. That's it. This is the only thing I will I will choose, and I will say here, okay. Now you can click here and you see uh, description. What is this classifier? What it does? What is the meaning of every single item here? Uh, okay. Uh, what is the uh, capabilities of this? Okay. So it can be done for binary class, data class, missing numbers, and so on and so forth. So you can learn more about the, the classifier here. I will select OK. I'm done. That's it. So I select the classifier. I upload the data. All I need to do is start. OK, so it waited 0.23 seconds. And now here I get my my values that it will evaluate to me how good or how bad is my classifier which is the the one that we dis, we discussed in the first tutorial correlation coefficient mean absolute error root mean squared error relative absolute error and root relative squared error and we said that for the first one the the maximum you can get is one so 0.8588 and the others, you are the the less the the better. Now, with these numbers, we don't know actually how good or how bad it is. I mean, uh, because we have to compare with different classifiers. But for this session, we will be using only neural network. Okay, we'll not use any other classifiers. In the future, we will compare between the different classifiers and see which one is uh, is better. I will do only one thing here. Uh, so this is 0 0.8588, 2 0.9794, 3.80. I will just click, he come here, and you click, and I will change the hidden layer to 2. This is the only thing I will be doing. I will say OK, and then I will, I will start. Now, it took longer time. We have here, because now we have here uh, more hidden layers mean more mapping, uh, more complicated computation to map the input to the output, but it's, it's not that big of a deal. It's uh, 0.15 seconds, that's all. And here you see some improvement here. So we increase the number of layers, hit the layers from one to two, we, uh, we got a better, uh, a better results. That's it. So see how simple it is? You don't need to know programming. You, you apply it here, you see the results right away. And now, if you are interested to dig deeper and deeper in machine learning, still we will learn a lot about this software because there are tons of features we did not yet explore. So explore them one by one as we move on, but again, in the context of power system components or asset assessments, okay? But after, if you think that after all of these features is not really enough for you, then you can. It's justified for you to learn, let's say, Python and go and learn more uh, in-depth analysis. Uh, more, you will have, when you use Python, you will have uh, more accessibility to the uh, tweaking the different parts of the, of the algorithm, okay? I hope you enjoyed this one. If you are interested in this data, to get this data, uh, please just uh, write your email in the comment section uh, in, in YouTube, and I will be more than happy to send it to you. And with the published papers that we uh, we publish from this data, uh, so that you can you can you can reference reference them and understand more more uh, more the data. Thank you very much for joining me, and uh, we will uh, meet soon to do the classification problem. Bye, everyone.